Hey, Intermediate Algebra. So here is a con you're going to want to pay attention to. Definitely practice this. Definitely check your answers with me. Um, but this is where we really get into the, uh, the meat and bones of this unit of factoring quadratics, which is what it's called factoring quadratics by grouping. So you're going to notice here is the question right up here that they asked you. They want you to factor the quadratic expression completely, which is 6x squared minus 13x plus 6. You're going to notice that I put together a diamond and a rectangle right here. So we want to, in order to factor these and have a very simple way of doing this, we're going to do what's called the diamonds and rectangles method, which is a part of the CPM book that you've been a part of for a couple years now. And so diamonds and rectangles, here's how it works. We first work with the diamond. Okay, and what goes in the very top part of the diamond is if you multiply your a times your c term. Hopefully you remember this up here is your a term, this one is your b term, and this one is your c term. Okay, if you remember these are your three terms, your a term of 6x squared times your c term of positive 6 would equal 36x squared. Hopefully that makes sense. Then whatever your b term here is, including the little negative sign, goes in the bottom. It's your b term, so negative 13x squared. So we fill these two in automatically, and then over in the rectangle, we're going to fill in what is the a term. Well, the a term is just this one right here, 6x squared, so we're going to plug that in. Your c term down here is the positive 6, so we're going to put a positive 6 right there. That part gets filled in, it's automatic, and it's easy. Now comes the thinking part. We need to come up with two terms right here that will multiply to the top term, but add up to the bottom term. <coughs> this takes thinking on your part. So you got to think, what would multiply to positive 36x squared, but add up to a negative 13x? You might come up with eventually that, oh, that's right, 9 times 4, 9 times 4 is 36, and 9 plus 4 is 13. And man, if I just put negatives in front of them, a negative times a negative would be a positive 36x squared. And negative 9x plus negative 4x equals negative 13x. Once you can figure that out, the rest of this flows pretty smoothly. We know we have a 9x and a 4x that go in these two boxes. We're going to take these two terms and transfer them to the two empty boxes here. It doesn't matter the order that you put them in. So I'm just going to put the negative 4x there and the negative 9x there. Now, now we need to do the factoring out. Find out what they have in common. But before we do that, do you notice how there's a couple negatives in here? When we have negatives, we've got to factor out those negatives and get rid of them first. And if possible, I like to take them out of the actual part of the numbers where they both don't have an x term. So I'm going to take them out of here. I'm going to take the biggest number these two have in common would be a 2. And because one of them has a negative, the other doesn't, I'm going to pull out a negative 2 right there. In essence, it's almost like turning this positive 6 into a negative 3 now because we divided by negative 2. And then if this is a negative 9, and that would be a negative now here, these two would have a negative in common, which would now be the negative 3 part. So I like to get my negatives out first. That really creates everything into a positive. So now I can just think 6x squared and 4x, what do they have in common? Well, 6 and 4 is 2, and they both have an x term, so I'm going to pull out a 2x out of them. You'll notice these two both have an x term in common, and 6 and 9, they both have a 3 in common, so we'd pull out a 3x. You will notice on the answer I will type up here, I've got a 2x minus 3 and a 3x minus 2. There it is right there, 3x minus 2, which came from here, and the 2x minus 3, which came from right here. All right, let's do another one because this is complicated and I get it. And sorry for the length of this video. Here's this one right there. Again, we need to set up our diamonds and rectangles. So here's our diamonds and rectangles set up. We need to multiply our a term times our c term. So I'll do that right there to get negative 40x squared. Our b term, which is the middle term, goes right here, negative 18x. My a term, which is 8x squared, goes right here. My c term, negative 5, goes right there. So that part, hopefully, is pretty simple. Now we need to think of two numbers that multiply to negative 40x squared but add to negative 18x. After thinking for a while, you might come up with, oh, negative 20x 
times positive 2x would equal negative 40x, and negative 20x plus 2x would equal negative 18x. Again, this is the part that takes the most thinking right there. And you're probably going to want to ask me questions from time to time. How do I get there? Well, I'm happy to help you. Now, we take these two in either order and we put them up here. So I'll put the negative 20x here and the 2x here. As I said earlier, once you're here, we just got to find out what's the biggest number they have in common. And I like to start with negatives. So I'm actually going to take the negative out of these two first, which is a negative 5 in common for those two. These two both have a 2 and an x in common, so I'll pull out a 2x. By pulling the negative out, these both really become positives. So now these two have a positive 4 as their greatest common, and they have an x. And these two have nothing in common. When they have nothing in common, they truly have a 1 in common. So we'd pull out a 1 there. So I have 2x minus 5, 4x, and a positive 1, so I put that right up here. 4x positive 1 and the 2x minus 5, and those are your factors. Hey, obviously you're going to want me to check these for you guys. Um, good luck on this, and uh, we will keep working at it. Thanks. Bye-bye.